Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. Before we do the final torquing of our head bolts, we want to check the clearance of our rocker shaft with our uh, head studs that are internal on the head there. So basically, we're just going to just by hand push the rocker shaft onto the mounting studs here. Make sure the rockers aren't jammed in the head. What we're looking for is internally, there's the head studs that are inside the rocker shaft area here, we want to make sure that they're not interfering or hitting the rocker shaft itself. Uh, and if they are, uh, you need to trim those off. Now on this particular engine, I did have to trim three of the four uh, internal head studs. What I did is individually, I loosened the nut and then threaded the rod out of the case with the nut still on it. Rather than removing the whole head, I could just remove one rod at a time, and then I just used an abrasive cutoff wheel and cut them off uh, the length that I wanted. Then I slid the rod back in, threaded it into the case, and then retorqued the nut to our 10 pound foot setting is what we were using uh, on this initial uh, fit up. So once I get those all trimmed, and I know that there's not gonna be any interference between my rocker shaft and my head studs, now we're ready to go ahead and do the final torquing of the head to 18 pound feet. And there's a different pattern that we use for this final torquing than we did for the initial uh, 10 pound foot torquing. So this one, instead of going straight across bottom row and then top row, we're gonna alternate between both rows of, of studs so that we pull the head evenly down onto the cylinders. So we're gonna start with this center one here and we're going to torque that to 18 pound feet which my wrench is already set for then we're going to go diagonally up here to this center one on the top and we're going to torque that one once we get to 18 pound feet on that one we're going to go straight down to this other center one in the lower row bring that up to 18 pound feet then we're going to go diagonally over to this center one here 18 pound feet. Now we're going to go to this outer one on the bottom row. Then we're going to go diagonally to the outer one on the top row. We'll go straight down to the bottom one here. And then finally we'll come over and do the upper one on the top row. And that's the final torquing of our head. We're going to go and repeat that process on the other side, checking our rocker arm clearance with our studs, trimming our studs as necessary, and then doing the final torque on the other head. Now that our heads are torqued, our next step is to check the alignment of the rocker arms with the valve stems. In order to do that, we'll have to temporarily install our rocker shaft on the head, and then we'll visually uh, inspect the alignment. These shims go on the studs here in the head that uh, mount the rocker shaft and we're going to start with two. Uh, we may adjust the amount of shims there depending on how our alignment turns out. So I'm going to put two shims on as a preliminary start. I'm going to slide my rocker shaft back on. Now that my rocker shaft is temporarily installed, I'm going to torque it on so that it is set in the operational position. We've got our rocker shaft hold down nuts here. 
and thread those on. I will torque these to 14 pound feet. And now we're going to visually check the alignment of the rocker arms to the valve stems. There are two styles of rocker arms that you may find in an Aero V engine. This particular engine has these little swivel balls in the end of the uh, rocker arm adjusters. There's a different style that we call the elephant foot style, which is actually is also swivels, but it's a larger, flatter surface that uh, presses on there. And uh, it looks a little bit different, but it serves the same purpose. But in either case, you want the little flat to be pressing against the valve stem. So you want to make sure that you align the ball so that it's going to press against the valve stem with the flat. And that's uh, especially important when you do the final installation of your rocker arms. But for right now, we're just going to look at how this rocker arm aligns with the valve stem right here. You don't want them to be pressing on the middle of the shaft. You want to have the rocker arm aligned so that it's slightly off center. Not so much that the uh, little swivel ball is off the edge of the stem, but you want it off center so that every time it opens the valve, it will slightly rotate the valve. So you want it just to be slightly off center like you can see here. You can adjust that uh, primarily by changing the amount of those shims that I uh, put on the head before I installed the rocker shaft, those square shims. You might add or subtract a shim uh, underneath the rocker shaft in order to change this alignment slightly. Or if it's a more extreme case, you may have to disassemble the rocker shaft and change the spacing of the uh, shims that are on the rocker shaft itself. Uh, typically, you'll be able to get them to uh, align without disassembling the rocker shaft but sometimes you will come to a point where you have to move one or two shims on the rocker shaft in order to get them to properly align.